Max was, if those that can remember back, uh, he was racing his Viking 30 here at Inshore at the club and then um, uh, d decided that he wanted another boat and uh, bought Prime Factor and uh, went off and did Bali in, in 2015 and, and again in 2017 and uh, cruised through all uh, Indonesia and, uh, and went up to Southeast Asia and did regattas and more cruising. Uh, more and more up there. So I don't want to uh, take uh, any much more of Max's time except for he's given me his notes. So I'd just like to read the uh, first, first paragraph because I think it sort of uh, uh, indicates what he's uh, about, I think, with his sailing adventures. He says, um, Prime Factor was the boat I fell in love with. And at an early stage, the discussions of possibly doing a barley race were sowing seeds for future journeys ahead. At that point, and only being an inshore sailor at FSC, the challenges and thoughts of going too far beyond even the shores of Rotnest was daunting. Um, so now he's here with us uh, down the track uh, with the title of his talk, Prime Factor, Beyond Bali and More. A, a racing yacht can successfully cross over and do both racing and cruising. Thank you, Max Pileski. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm quite actually honoured to have so many people come here and listen to me uh, spill my little blurb around. But um, Steve, thanks very much for that intro. It's um, you basically just took it all in a nutshell. That um, in my early days, I uh, I sailed sort of around the river for about nine years. Came to Fremantle for another um, sixteen years. Sailed on a Viking Thirty. Which one? Midnight Sun uh, with Ken Pring, um, and then uh, my son started getting involved in the uh, in, in selling that boat. So uh, and Ken was getting a bit uh, tired of it. So I bought the boat off him and sailed that Viking Thirty for another five years. So all in told, it was about uh, you know, around thirty odd years of selling Viking Thirties around the place, and um, I started getting to the point where I th thought I needed to go and do something a bit more than just. Um, Sailing a Viking 30. Um, started looking around at yachts, uh, had a look at a few places, a few different boats. Um, back in sometime in 2013, um, I went down uh, down Bunbury with uh, a good friend of mine, Wendy, who's at the back there, and um, we saw this old boat just sitting there in a pen, just getting pretty much wasted away as we have a lot of people have done the same thing, they've sort of seen boats waste away. Um, I saw it and I thought, wow, that's the boat for me. Um, after all the things I've seen and done, uh, boats I've looked at, um, she was a solid boat but needed a bit of work. So I made the decision to put them off on the boat, got it for a relatively inexpensive price for what I thought was at the time um, and um, the expenses still go <laughs> as we all know as yacht owners the expenses don't stop that's right um, but the um, and, a, and a few people I, I spoke to a few people at the club in, in the early days and I really you know I was I, I still am and was a nobody at the time and um, I asked a few people a couple of questions, pertinent questions about doing some offshore sailing and uh, you know what's involved and how do I go about it. And they basically said to me, um, just get a boat and do it. Um, so I bought this boat. My first decision was to, how do I get this boat from Bunbury to Perth? Now, the furthest I've gone, and the reason I'm telling you this is because uh, there's, obviously there's a lot of offshore sailors here that have done well be more, more miles than what I have ever, have ever done and probably will ever do. But there's a lot of people that probably want to hear that um, that someone from a very re relatively um, unknown background and unexperienced background in the offshore scene can, can venture off to the journeys where I've been or have been and still, go, and still am. Um, so I spoke to a couple of people in the club and, and the few people that I actually knew was uh, um, was, and I did bump into him downstairs, was uh, Jeff Bishop because I had an a, a, a association with, him, with my sales, uh, with the old boat. Uh, Gary Martin, who uh, I had an association with uh, painting the old boat. Um, 
and obviously the, the late and great Rob Thomas, who I knew through the club and uh, gave me so much encouragement through the very, very early stages of getting Pride Factor. So with all that small amount of knowledge gained, I thought, I've now got to bring this boat from Bunbury. And uh, the furthest I've gone before that was actually Yangtze. So it was a, quite an extensive journey for me. Um, I ordered a life raft. <laughs> got some life jackets, a um, whole bunch of new flares, the boat had nothing, and uh, myself, my son, Alex, uh, Wendy, and, uh, and, and Marcus, we jumped on the boat and um, put the sails up. Oh, bugger me, after about half an hour, or about, well, maybe not quite half an hour, a couple of hours, the, uh, the main blew out. <laughs> so that was a good start. So we reached the main, we got back, to, we actually took the boat, we got, we got the boat back into, uh, into Fremantle and that was uh, in uh, just the, the long weekend of the Australia Day weekend in 2014. So that was my first offshore journey. Um, got to Fremantle, the boat literally, the boat literally, um, and you'll see a, a, a couple of pictures here. This is a few, obviously the prime factor. One was, uh, that first one was in Thailand. Uh, this is prime factor sitting very proud outside the, uh, at our wonderful sailing club. And um, then you'll, the next photo you'll see is, the, uh, is us leaving Bunbury in the old stripes of the old prime factor. Now, most of you know prime factor. It's an OR far 40. 30 years old, uh, foam core with Kevlar coating, built by Peter Milner Yachts in 1987. Uh, 40 foot, draws two and a half metres, um, has been modified from its original um, um, configuration. She has got beds with mattresses, uh, has got a wonderful fridge, a very small galley and a toilet that works, uh, which is very important when you want to start going a bit beyond the shores of, um, of our wonderful country. The, um, the boat steeped in history in its own right well before I bought it. Um, she'd done four Sydney to Hobart's, uh, has been a uh, CYC Blue Water Champion in 88 and uh, 90, was a CYC of South Australia, uh, Boat of the Year in 96 to 97. Um, in its, uh, as with the Geraldine coming up, um, in a debut year, 1987, in the Jordan race, was first overall. Um, and then obviously I've taken her over, with many years of, of other wonderful accolades that she's got, I've taken her over, built her up, and... Um, just, just a rough right now. Um, and uh, that long weekend, we pulled her out of the water, and she is now the prime factor that we actually all know. That's the old girl, she's, that's the stripes that she's had for many, many years. Uh, that's in the shed and then she comes out to be the wonderful New York she is. So that's the story of Prime Factor. You've heard my story, which isn't a lot. And when we first bought the boat, as Steve alluded to at the very start, we, um, we were already discussing things about a barley race. And to me that was a a pie in the sky, but really had, it inspired me and gave me thoughts of, well, there's, I've got a boat that can actually do, has got a history and can actually do more than what I wanted to do. Um, so we, um, we got the boat in the water, spent six months learning it. It's a very different boat from a, uh, a Viking 30. And then we, um, we, I tried to dabble in a bit of offshore racing. Well, that was another bug of me situation because I never actually finished one of them. Um, something broke, something got damaged, crew got sick. Um, it was all sorts of weird, wonderful things. And um, the, uh, the, the history of, of me trying to get to offshore sailing wasn't a very good start. Uh, we did the Albia race, which um, has got its own little story running down there. Um, and uh, we won't allude too much into that. But then um, my wonderful friend Wendy came all the way over from Chile to uh, came and uh, come and sail me on a return trip from Albany, and uh, we have finished the race. We finished the race in Albany, 2015, uh, 360 odd miles in some reasonable weather, 
and we actually got the third place. And uh, that was our wonderful little achievement, and we just got so buzzed about it. But I already entered Bali race, which was only four weeks later. And so I've just come back from Melbourne and think to myself, holy shit, now what am I doing? So we decided to go to Bali. Oh, that's, um, that's actually Bali 2017. And uh, Ronnie, where are you? The, the main drinks pourer. Um, yeah, he still does it. And uh, he, was in, he was an instrumental part of um, sailing on that boat. Good barman, he is. So we, um, we did Bali 2015. A bunch of people that were really just uh, some friends, some um, and was, you know, people that, well, well Sealy came from over in St Kilda, never met until the night of the uh, presentation night. And um, so the crew back then was obviously myself, Wendy, Stacey, Warren Erasmus, uh, Mike Jordan, Celia from Melbourne, and, um, and Ken, who I haven't seen for a while. But we were a bunch of unknown people that we just went out there, had some fun. We, got the, we actually got the barley. 11 and a half days later on, we got the barley. Uh, we got a third on YH and a third on IRC. Wow, were we so impressed with ourselves. It was just an amazing journey. Uh, we got there, we were just so stoked with ourselves. The friendships, were, the, the bonds of friendship was just amazing. So we get the barley. All of a sudden, I started meeting new friends on, on shore. People wanted to know who I am. And uh, I said, oh, I'm just Max Pilesco, I bought a boat, spent some money up and sailed to Bali. Um, and it's the first long distance, the first international event I've ever done. That led on to other things. We, uh, we then turned around um, after the events of the festivities of Bali and came back home. Now, the thing with when you do a long distance journey like Bali, and this is probably part of the, uh, the, 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 the topic of the night, is that um, why go to Bali and then just turn around and come back home? We slogged back for a couple of weeks. It got colder and colder and colder, the further south we came. And we were saying on the boat, why the hell are we going south? We should be going north. Or at least staying up there in the tropics and just enjoying it. Because we've done all the hard work. Get the boat ready, we do prepare it, we got it ready, we made some friendships, and let's enjoy the beyond the shores of of, of the Indonesian islands. So I get back to, um, to WA, we do some more inshore racing, some more offshore racing, some uh, terry fishes, some gold madres and the Coburn Sound regattas and um, had some wonderful successes and all that. But in the back of the mind was always, shit, Bali 2017 is coming out. Um, so go to Bali 2017, it was only last year. Um, was literally what, not, not quite a year ago. Um, no, a bit more than that, but anyway. Um, put a team together. This team was, um, again, it was myself, it was Wendy, it was Warren, who was on the original team. Uh, Dino, who's at the back there. Um, Ronnie Greer and James Ellison. We did it in nine and a half days this particular trip. Um, magnificent weather, amazing trip. The, uh, the boat went well, the team was pushing it as hard as it could. Um, we didn't get any IRC re results, but we still got a, a second in YH, just behind uh, Walk on the Wild Side. So I thought that was an achievement in itself. Prior to just take a little step back, prior to doing that, we uh, part of my ambition was not to turn around from Bali and come back again on this particular trip. So um, after doing some research over many months to try and work out, because the boat is uh, essentially a, a race boat with a bit of a fit out, it had no water pilot, there's no water maker, there's limited storage. Um, I had to go and work out how I'm going to go cruise beyond Bali without an autopilot. So, I did do some research in autopilot, and um, at one point, I think it was Stacey sort of mentioned to me that uh, she knows Robbie and Phil have got a uh, little bit of an item that they were no longer using. Um, and this item was an electric drive autopilot that uh, they said to me, you can have, put on the boat if it fits, we'll work something out later on. 
We're still going to work that little something out later on. Yeah, uh, I haven't got that yet. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the, this order pilot was only installed, the, not the finished installed the day before Bali 2017. We get to Bali, have the festivities, have a wonderful time, and then we, uh, myself and Wendy, decided that we were, uh, well, not decided, we were already planned to head to Darwin. And going across the Darwin was basically going across the top of all the, uh, the, east, 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 uh, the, in the eastern Indonesian archipelago. Without the autopilot being tested, with the autopilot installed and all the all the fruits and bits and pieces, we uh, we set out from Benoa Harbour one uh, one afternoon, um, did our calibration, pushed the button, and she worked. The boat was steer self steering, and that was the very first time that Prime Factor in a 30 year history has ever driven herself. So we had a beer, or or two, um, to celebrate that occasion, the momentous occasion. Uh, we headed off to um, uh, Limbogan, then we ended up having a night over there, ended up to Gilly Air. Met up with um, Robbie and Phil and a few other cruising boats who were having a bit of a cruise around the islands. And um, the story goes that you've actually got to name your autopilot or something, but you can't name it, you've actually, the name has got to come to you. So we were sitting under this um, little bar, which we picked out, it was called the Why Not Bar with a couple of um, interesting characters in there. After several semi-warm, semi-cold uh, bintangs, the name, uh, and the name, the, one of the barman's name was actually Gabriel. We decided to call the boat, the, the uh, to autopilot Gabriel. So the boat has got a permanent resident on board. It's called Gabriel, the autopilot. Without the autopilot, I would not be where I am now. That's the short, that's the long version of where we are now. Um, essentially, from that point on, we uh, we said our goodbyes and farewells to everyone. We carried on through the, uh, the the top end of Indonesia, going east. Uh, stopped into some wonderful places, met some beautiful people. Um, forget Bali itself is as a, as a resort place where people go there and in their hordes. Once you get out to the, uh, the little little uh, islands and meet the individual people, the villages. <laughs> who will welcome you with open arms, they were, um, they, okay, sometimes they might try and, you know, what do you call it, um, take you for granted or take advantage of you, but you have a little bit of smile to that, yeah, uh, smile, and they'll smile back, uh, you be polite, and they're polite back, they want to know more about you and more about your adventures, because they generally just revolve around their own little, little areas, and um, to, hear the adventures you know, that we have done just to get that point and that's only a small part of the whole journey um you know the, the eye the, the, the way they sort of shine when you're talking to them I've, I've stood in front of a class of students and just without speaking any indonesian and just had them in fits and we just you know they were just amazed um you know, a little bit of broken indonesian and you have a little chart and you sort of say and start little drawing things on the walls and um they're amazing people, they're beautiful, actually beautiful people. So that's the start of the journey to, to, to the Indonesia. We, the, the aim was to get to Darwin to go and do the, um, and essentially basically what I'm doing at Prime Factor is, um, is following the uh, Southeast Asian circuit um, for racing. But in between that, you have to get there. Now, the unfortunate part is that we did have an engine, some engine dramas uh, along the way. Uh, we were stuck in, um, in Lambana, which is uh, uh, a town of about 70 odd thousand people. So it's not a small place, but um, very limited speaking English. Um, lots of custom officers, lots of uh, authorities there that all want to know what you're doing and what you're about. Which brings me to one little point where if you do go to Indonesia, if you do go to any place in the world where you want to go and then you've got to go somewhere beyond that, what the general consensus was that once we left Bali that we would go and do all our clearances in somewhere like Kapang or somewhere else, some other place, do your clearances wherever you report your leave if you're not going to go to another destination. We had an engine drama, we had no visas. So with all the good things of this wonderful thing, you just got to make sure that you do the, things, the right things. We, you know, my hotel room, the door, the door directly, directly opposite me was um, the customs official. And he would see me in the mornings and uh, say to me, is your boat fixed? I said, we're working on it. Four weeks later, we actually got out of there. 
uh, and without too many questions being asked. Became very friendly with the uh, harbour master, became very friendly with the chief of police. Um, there were some other dramas with a boat where it dragged its anchor and found it sort of almost on the beach. Um, people sort of uh, all banded together and assisted um, because that's the nature of them. They just are willing to help out. Um, so there's the great side of sailing through the Asia areas where you just go out there and you meet some beautiful people, some wonderful archipelagos, uh, little bays and creeks, whatever else. But your prime factor is a race boat. Uh, it's not a cruising boat, it's lightweight. Uh, it gets swung around by a lot of swell and currents. Uh, we're only carrying the bare minimum um, uh, anchors uh, for racing. So when you sort of put up an anchorage, um, you don't have the tackle to hold the boat that well down down below. So um, that's all been improved now. It's a, it was a learning curve, um, but it's uh, it, it was still an amazing experience. Um, so long story short, we ended up getting to Dilly. We got to Dilly and uh, did all our clearances and made our way back to Darwin. Um, that was uh, crossing the equator. We first, what was my first, my first crossing of the equator, uh, Prime Factor's first crossing of the equator, and um, Neptune, who's sitting at the back, put on a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, made the event worth what it is. What you're seeing now is well beyond where I'm, where I'm, where I'm at with my talk at the moment. I'll just let it roll through. Um, we get to Darwin and uh, Again, it's my first venture into Darwin with, with, um, with Prime Factor, and Darwin is another wonderful place to, to do some sailing around. Um, it has some beautiful waters, some beautiful islands around there, uh, amazing people there that you can, if, if, if you're nodding, I can, yeah, I agree with that. Um, so amazing people out there, um, and you can have some fun out in Darwin as well. Um, it's a point where if you don't want to go beyond the shores of the Indonesian archipelago and head back to Australia, that's certainly a point where you can go across there and have a really good time and uh, meet some amazing people as well and have a great time and doing it yourself. Um, at least I speak English. So, um, you know, the customs officers are really well. I've, I've dealt with many customs officers all over the place and um, uh, across up and down the coastline. Just do the right thing. Um, as long as you don't hide anything, they will be more than welcoming and uh, they will look after you. The, um, so we leave Darwin, we do the Darwin and Ambon race, unfortunately because of our, the dramas with the engine we, uh, we were short-handed, we short so there was only three of us, so we did 650 miles with, with three people on board. Um, we did the Ambon race, we got last, but that's not the, uh, the issue, the, 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 well, that wasn't a big issue. Um, we actually arrived, we arrived safe, and we had a good time partying afterwards. The destination is the whole reason for where you're going. It doesn't matter whether you come first, second, last, or whatever. It's your, it's your, it's your destination and the people you meet and the friendships you make on your way on throughout that whole journey. Did the Darwin Ember race? We uh, we took we we, we uh, sailed across in some fairly average weather. Sailing, is, as most of us know, is not uh, the the wonderful um, flat water, beautiful weather. Um, it can be some some interesting sort of um, storm systems come through. But we got the, from where we, we decided we'd go across to the Banda Islands and meet, um, and meet some friends of ours there. Um, the, uh, some other people, some other cruisers that actually had left Darwin Ambon and gone to the Banda Islands. Um, we were going there for one night. Well, apparently the, term, the weather was not that great, so we stayed there for seven days, apparently. <laughs> Um, and the Banda Islands are beautiful, steeped in history. And this is whole, you know, that other thing you can, you know, when, when you go out there and sail these little places and you find these little, you know, the Banda Islands, is, as we all know, is just a little archipelago in the middle of absolutely nowhere, but the whole world was fighting over it, you know, you know thousands of years ago. Um, but when you actually get there, you realise that it's just a beautiful place to visit. Um, the people are amazing, they're welcoming, and the, uh, you just don't want to leave. Um, so the um, so we stayed there for seven days because we actually did, did actually really enjoy it there. Um, that was for self and Wendy. So we did, then we ended up heading heading back south. We had to get back south because we had to get back to Darwin. 
finalised the issues with the boat. We got there um, about three or four days later. We crossed the, um, uh, as we do, we, when we cross the, uh, into the international boat line, we have a beer. No matter what time of the morning is, the beer is always there. It's always cold, the fridge works. It's a race boat with a, with a really good fridge in it. <laughs> So we get it down, spend a couple of weeks setting, sorting the boat out, and the aim was to, initially it was the aim was to actually go to the King's Cup. Now King's Cup is in Phuket, so down in Phuket is a long way. So the plan was to head to Kapang, do the clearance in Kapang, go to Bali, go from Bali and then head north. <coughs> well, we did that, and there was no issues. We got there um, in relatively quick time, um, I know that uh, we, uh, this is a sailing, racing versus, and, and, and cruising sort of talk. We were doing quick cruising. We weren't necessarily stopping at a lot of places. Um, we probably could have and should have, um, but with the dramas we had with the engines, it took a lot of our time away to actually make the most of us. So it's a, a lot of small destinations where we actually wanted to. But we still did get to see a lot of destinations, a lot of places that were amazing and met a lot of people. The aim was to get them to Phuket, you go and do the Phuket Race Week, oh, sorry, King's Cup. On the way through, we, uh, we, uh, we, you probably saw those photos earlier, Ronnie's pouring drinks again. Um, you probably saw those photos earlier with the, uh, the chart plotter, with the, uh, all the AIS targets and through, uh, through Singapore, it gets quite hairy. Um, we did the old frogger uh, trying to cross the Malacca Straits with um, 360 metre ships fully loaded up doing 20 odd knots and um, with a, uh, I think it was a, about a 20 odd knot breeze against us uh, with the engine at four revs, so that was interesting. Um, but we got there, we got there safely, we, met, we got to, and we actually get, got to uh, Port Clang where we did the, um, the Raja Muda. Now, the Raja Muda is a, uh, is, uh, the, the, the promo, there's, there's a, a booklet there from last year, the promo is nine, nine uh, nine days, four destinations that's full on. Well, it certainly is full on. Um, you get to see four different destinations through that journey. And uh, it is a race, it's a regatta. So we, we, we picked up on the back of that on the way up to um, to Phuket. Well, bugger me, we got a second place, which was not bad. Um, <clears throat> so we got to the King's Cup, did that, did they, so we stayed, we, we did the, sorry, the Raja Mudder finishes the Lane County. Now, if anyone hasn't been to Lake Cowie, you need to go. It is an amazing place. Um, it's a wonderful waters. It's, it's like the Coburn Sound on steroids, but with no wind. Um, lots of islands, um, lots of little places and nooks and crannies. Uh, yeah, we, we, we did a trip around the back of the island on the last journey, the last trip up there, and um, found these amazing little hideouts and there's a, a World UNESCO little sites there that you can sail through. Uh, there's a hole in the wall that you sail through. And there's, it's, yeah, we unfortunately weren't able to stay there as long as what we wanted to. Well, actually, we didn't stay there. We just actually sailed through it uh, and saw it, but it, it would have been the, the next the next trip will actually make the most of it. I've seen a lot of places on the way this, or through this trip that I will be going back to and making the most of that um, those destinations. The um, So we got to the King's Cup, and uh, that was a bit of a fail, but we, um, in terms of, uh, we got put in the wrong division, but uh, we, we sailed through there and well, we sailed to the King's Cup and then had, a, had the event. And then we ended up by um, uh, having a, a little bit, a few few days to ourselves. The whole point about this is that um, when, we, uh, when we were going through um, all these islands, one of the things you do have to be wary of is the, the fish traps, the fish nets, um, the fishing boats. Um, um, but it doesn't sort of, this to do you from when you pull up these little anchorages and all these kids come out with little dugouts and um, bring a whole bag of books, some pencils, that's all they want. Just give them something that's simple and easy and they have the biggest smiles in their faces. Where do I go from here? Um, essentially, the, uh, the journey is still going. Um, this is just a short stop at the moment. Um, I'm in Langkawi tomorrow just to go back up and check on the boat before the next Raja Muda. Um, the, uh, it's opened my eyes up to the boy who just sailed around the cans to, um, to the guy who was shit scared about going from Bunbury to, to, to Fremantle. 
to now having his boat in Lankawi and sailing through Southeast Asia. Um, I do follow racing circuits around, but those racing circuits take me through destinations that I would never would have imagined and never would have been in, in my whole life. Um, and it's the people, that you, and, and the, the whole crux of this is, 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 is what I get out of it is, it certainly changed my life completely. Um, you make new friends daily. You, you meet new people daily. Um, and the, the, the sailing community is such a wonderful sailing community in those destinations because they are all out there doing the same thing as what we're doing, and that's sailing. And um, we go out there to have fun and enjoy it. When, whether you're racing, whether you're cruising, um, whether you're just sailing around the cans, it's still sailing. Um, but it's where you want to take it, and it's where you want it to be, and it's where you want it to be. Um, and if this boy can come out of out of the river and sail around in the Cove and the Sound, and then all of a sudden be in freaking Thailand, um, if I can do it, anybody else can do it. Um, and that's basically my spiel: is that don't be scared about doing shit. Just go and do it. Um, yes, it does cost you a little bit of money. It might cost you a bit of heartache. But the joys that you get out of it in the end um, are amazing, um, and that's as yeah, that, that's where I am now. I, you know, life is just great because um, you can go out there and you can see these destinations with like-minded people and meet a whole bunch of new people that um, that would become friends for the rest of your life. Um, you know, like the like the sailing community that's here for me, um, who I never knew meant much about before I bought this boat. Um, so for me, this boat has really changed my life and has made opened up whole new opportunities for me and new friendships. Um, and that's basically what it's all about. Friendships, opportunity, and enjoyment. And that's basically it. Has anyone got any questions for Max? Um, the state of the oceans, um, look, I've been reasonably fortunate that the, uh, the oceans I've sailed in so far um, have, have been quite good. Um, there's been some interesting circumstances. There's been uh, some storm fronts that have come through that really sort of um, make you think, uh, well, why am I out here? But um, you wouldn't necessarily go out in that, but once you're out there, you deal with it. And you know, I suppose that's what we do. We just when you're out there, you deal with, you learn to deal with lots of things. The adversities that you deal with when you're alone on the boat or with limited people and you know, friends and you know, there's, there's not much resources on the boat. Um, you learn to deal with it and, it, and it's, it's, you, you tend to become very resourceful with the, the minimal amount of um, um, support. So, um, but you're, um, yeah, you can you, you, you sell to your conditions and you make the most of it, and you just you really do. Sorry. Sort of asking, because uh, we've all been out there and thought, oh my God, can I perhaps have a bit of this? And we're all still here, so that's a good sign. Yeah. But um, I'm thinking more about, I'm talking about marine pollution. Oh, the marine pollution is certainly one thing that when you go to the uh, Southeast Asian, is only, I, I can only talk about where I've been. Um, there's some places where, well, there's where you get off on the beach and it's what looks like a pristine beach from a distance and the binoculars you turn up and there's just a horrible, horrible waste on it. Um, what we can do is just don't throw any shit in the water, simple as that. Um, keep it contained and dispose of it. Um, you know, let's look at uh, you know, recyclable things. Let's, let's, look, let's look at uh, you know, taking less plastic on board and using bigger tubs and refilling and that sort of thing because plastic is one of the biggest issues that we've got to deal with right now on the oceans. Um, but yeah, in terms of pollution in general, you've just got to be wary of, of our ocean. It's, it's a beautiful ocean out there. There's some beautiful animals in there and uh, 
we are actually privileged to be sail to be able to be sailing in those in those waters. Um, and if they're polluted with all crap, then our boats are going to get damaged, and we're not going to be happy. But uh, <laughs> in, a, in a simplistic form, but I mean, yeah, in, in the reality, is uh, it is it is a problem. Um, yeah, Max, how, how do you find uh, leaving your boat and, and, and going back to it in various places? Um, really good. The uh, I mean, in, in the end, of you know, most of the places I've left the yacht is um, uh, is in either marina, a, a good marina, or um, uh, on a good hard stand. Um, the people over there are very well acquainted with cruising yachties and yachties in general, whether you're racing or cruising. Um, there's a whole world of boats that go in and out of there daily. Uh, we don't see it as much here because we are quite isolated. But uh, they are um, well trained to, to feel that your, your boat is your baby and your boat is your life. And they do look after it. Yeah, I, I haven't had a problem at this point. Um, so all the places, are, so the marinas have the actually world class. Yeah. Um, have, have, have you uh, been able to get a racing boat like you like you got and cruising it? How, how, how is that? Um, the, the race boat that I've got is um, you know from its early days, thirty years ago. It's been um, heavily modified. Um, it has a feeler, so which surprises a lot of the race boats I compete against. So I want to, and look, I do run my boat on a quite a strict budget because I'm not that uh, flush with funds um, as probably what a lot of people might think that I am, but I'm not. It's a, um, uh, I've only got two spinnakers, um, and my head tool is the be all and end all. But the, um, the, the the cost of running it is um, is. Also, the, the, the transition from a race boat to a cruising boat is it has a, a reasonable, comfortable fit out for, for at least two people. Four people is okay, but two people is ideal. Um, it has a fantastic fridge, um, and, uh, um, and that's very important. Um, um, it has a small galley, has a closed in toilet, uh, it has uh, some music, it has, um, it's, you know, it's, it's not a it's not a cruising boat as such in, 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 this, in terms of what uh, a 40 foot or 45 or a 50 foot cruising boat would have, um, but it's not, it's well and truly far from the old pipe cots. Um, it has an autopilot, it's got the Abriel, so <laughs> there we go. <laughs> High five. Any more questions for Max? Sorry, yeah. hi. Um, you mentioned that you don't, or well, you didn't at least have a desalinator. So no. Um, there is a 200 litre water tank on board. Um, and your, when you're in Indonesia, how do you fill your tank? Um, you can actually buy a bottle of water, like the big bottles. We, we, we don't fill up out of the taps. Um, we, you, you buy in the local water. Oh, which brings you another point with water and fuel. Two critical things. And you might have seen there's a... Not the Captain Morgan, the, the Mount Gaze. There was another. Good fuel. <laughs> that's good fuel. There was another bottle there, uh, a water bottle, and um, I put it up there deliberately to sort of show that there's. We actually have a, uh, a fuel bug problem. Um, buy yourself an eighty dollar Raycor funnel that will separate the water and the, and the little bits of crap out of there. Um, because we did get a, uh, a fuel problem, and I had to change all my fuel lines and fuel filters and. You know, got stopped to getting into the start of a race because of it. Um, so yeah, um, the fuel isn't, it, the water is probably a less of a problem than the fuel. Um, the water bottles that you get are generally a sealed bottle and you get the big tubs and you just fill your tanks with that. Or you can always buy you know, the one litre you know, in, in, in throughout Asia with all the plastics problems we've got. They've got loads of plastic bottles full of water that's drinkable. So that's not an issue, uh, but the fuel is fuel is when you go into some of these little back blocks and they open up this little creaky shed, shed and there's an eight gallon, 44 gallon drum with diesel in it and they're scooping it out and putting it into your, it's, that's a bit of a problem uh, because without fuel you've got no power, without power you've got no lights and without no lights, power you've got no navigation and um, we, re we rely heavily on our electronic stuff these days so yeah, keep your um, fuel clean is basically what I'll, I was saying and I've learned from that because I did become, it was a problem for me. Anything else? Okay, I'm not going to, um, yeah, sure. anyone else? No. I'm not taking the glory. Bill, come down here also, please. 
I know you're feeding your face, but... <laughs> this is a collaborative evening tonight that we've put together between Offshore and um, Cruising. Travis has been absolutely instrumental and fantastic in supporting us. I think the three of us sitting here, Bill started cruising and he goes racing. We have a cruising boat that doesn't do too badly on the racing circuit every so often. And Max has taken a pure art racing boat and he's gone cruising, which shows exactly what we are at this club. Is we, we are a sailing club. No, I'm sorry. We are a... The on-water office, I'm sorry. <laughs> but us here tonight are sailors, and this is what we have to engulf, that we are sailors and we sail, and it doesn't matter what sort of sailing you do. If you race, you can cruise. If you've got, I don't know how much Condilly weighs, but you know, we can race and we do okay. Um, as do other races, as do other cruises, and this is what we're about. It's about bringing us together and being a sailing community. If you cruise, go racing. If you race, go cruising. Do it all together. You know, go around the cans on Saturday afternoons. Come down to Rockingham on the next cruise. Go up to Hillary's on the cruise. We have great fun doing everything together. Bill, would you like to say something? Uh, look, I'm very difficult to follow Robbie on uh, any topic, but um, <laughs> Robbie's absolutely right. I mean, so there is a lot in common between racing and cruising because sailing long distances up and down the coast at night, um, the two groups that do that are the racers and they are the cruisers. So people think, oh, racing and cruising, they're opposite end of the spectrum. Not, not at all. We've got a lot in common and um, we share the same issues in terms of the challenges of being out at, out at sea being remote from land, concerned about safety. Um, so, look, I think the more more events like this and the more things um, we can do together on the water, um, so much the better. It's great. We had the Mandra weekend last year. We had a few cruising boats came down and enjoyed that. We'll do the same again this year. And then, of course, we've got the ultimate cruise race uh, combination, which uh, Max got Max out um, from the confines of Rottnest, uh, which of course is the Bali race. We've got another one of those coming up. So, look, fantastic opportunity for crossover. And uh, please, um, if you feel like interest in joining a race, just come have a chat with me and uh, it's not that hard. Do it again. <laughs> Can, I'm sorry, would you like to send me an email? Myself or Connor an email and we will yeah. Try and yeah, and meet your needs. I'm sorry we do, we haven't. Um, we try. But yeah, no, I haven't been. Uh, I haven't done that sort of thing before. I need to promote myself. So, yeah. And yeah, and it's I get it. and we understand also when you know, like I look around here and I can see probably 25 friends, and it's very hard to break your way way around. Yeah. And I know Betty wants to tell me something because she's been trying to catch my eye for hours, but. You know, you, it's very hard sometimes to break yourself away and talk to new people. Um, but make yourself known to us and we'll do the best. Make yourself known to Travis. Where is he? He is the best person that will get you on a boat, or Connor. You know, and, and tell them what you want. Do you want to go jam selling? Do you want to just do a cruise? Do you want to try some offshore racing? And they'll get you on the boat. But it's about pushing yourself. Yeah, thank you very much. Anything else? Can we just wind up or not? We're just on the wind up. Bali 2020 is coming up. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. We can't forget that. We've talked about the last three Bali's, but now two Bali's, sorry, and 2020 is coming up. 100 year anniversary. Get your boats ready, get out there, do it, have some fun and enjoy it. I'm bringing my boat back all the way from Southeast Asia to come back and do it. So um, you, Max. I'll have you back here to sail against you guys and have some fun out there. So let's go and do it.